Hey everyone, it's Zach Beck. According to the Federal Reserve, the largest asset that the average American family owns is a home. Now this trend continues to intensify as the housing prices continue to reach all-time highs. Now for the nearly two-thirds of Americans to actually own a home, this is both good news and bad news. The good news is that as housing prices continue to increase, so does the overall net worth of those who actually own a home. On the flip side though, access to home equity is relatively limited and doesn't actually help you achieve long-term financial freedom. So what I want to do in this video is break down in detail the financial absurdity of owning a home and specifically the steps that you can take right now in order to diversify your investment portfolio so that you can actually move forward and achieve your long-term financial goals. So let's take our time, dive in the details and jump into it right now. All right, so I know I might have offended a few of you with the title of this movie as well as the overall notion that it is absurd to buy a home. Now, I'm not here to tell you that you only need to rent a home and not purchase a home because I personally believe that owning a home can be one of the fastest ways for people to actually enter into the middle class. Outside of either starting a business or earning a college education, home ownership is actually a great way for people to start building wealth. And I believe right now the notion in most personal finance individuals are only gearing towards renting versus buying. As someone who has both owned a home and also rented a home, I can speak to that a little bit. But I do want us to understand that purchasing a home is one of the largest financial decisions that you will ever make. And there's plenty of room for there to be mistakes made along those lines that hurt your overall long-term financial health. Furthermore, what you will find though is that if you can find the right home in the right location at the right time in your life, it could be a great opportunity for you to actually make that decision and actually help you move forward and achieve your long-term financial goals. So there are a few ways that you can actually build wealth while owning a home. As I previously mentioned, there are a few ways that you can actually build wealth while owning a home. The first is this, when you own a home, you actually own an asset. And as much as I would prefer to people to actually invest into index funds in the stock market, owning an asset can actually be one of the first things that people have in regards to their finances outside of just having a general checking account. So this is a very important step that people take, but generally do so under the notion that this is really an investment as opposed to a purchase. And I guess that's kind of the thing you wanna be aware of when you're actually moving forward to buy buy a home, if you're viewing it solely as an investment, it's something that might not be able to yield the same type of results in comparison to just investing into the S&P 500 through an index fund. But when you own an asset, it allows you to actually still move things forward and actually begin building wealth because you're forced to actually save money by paying down your mortgage. And on that note, one of the things that people aren't very good at in our society is saving money. But when you have a mortgage, you are actually forced to begin saving that money. And from that standpoint alone, it's very different when you're trying to save for retirement or when you're trying to save by purchasing a home and paying off your monthly mortgage. The reason is, is that there are actual severe consequences if you don't pay your mortgage. People are very good at paying it because they know if you miss a mortgage payment, you could either get evicted, you could have your house repossessed by the bank, it could be foreclosed upon, there's so many elements associated with it that if you do not make your mortgage payment, then you're less likely to actually be able to achieve the overall goal of actually holding on to that asset long term. So you'll find that being forced to actually save that money can help you build wealth long term. And I found that for myself personally. I bought my first home when I was 18 years old. It was a condominium and I was forced into the habit of having to put aside that $1,200 every month towards the mortgage and continue to pay that down over time. Now that was a benefit because as a young individual, I'm might have been less inclined to save money and depending upon what stage of life you're at you might be less inclined to save money so it does get you in that habit however i will say that if you were to take that same money and invest that into either a roth ira a 401k or even just into a group of index funds that actually might produce longer term yield in comparison to actually the home depending upon what happens in the market that you currently live in because real estate prices although they generally do increase over time they are subject to the various locations that you specifically live in so that's just something to bear in mind as well the third way that owning a home can help you build wealth is like I said before, home prices can continue to go up. And as housing prices continue to go up, so does your overall net worth. So it is helpful when you do find that your housing prices continue to increase, but it is selective because certain regions of the society or certain regions of our country are going to have a more of a boom experience versus a bust. Depending upon what's happening economically, if you live in an area where it's maybe more industrial and we find our country going a little bit away from industrial, you might see real estate prices go down. Whereas 
because if you live more in a technological center or somewhere where it's a little bit more in an urban setting, you might actually see your housing prices go up. If you live closer to the ocean or to a lake or to other body of water, your housing prices might go up. But if you live maybe in the middle of somewhere that isn't as uh, desirable from a natural resources standpoint, your housing prices might go down even though they might be high now. So it's just something to bear in mind. It is a bit of a risk, but if your housing price does increase over time, you can build additional wealth. So that's just something to be aware of. And I want you to know there are ways to build wealth with owning a home, but now I want to look at the financial absurdity of doing so as well. Now that we understand a few ways that owning a home can actually help you build wealth, I want to share a few reasons why you do not want your home to be your largest asset. And the first is this, owning a home is very expensive. In addition to buying a home where you have to put down a down payment of up to 20%, where you then have to make your monthly mortgage payments, you actually have to look at the long-term annual expenses that will be associated with owning that home. And the first, obviously, you're gonna have is your monthly mortgage payment, which can be significant, and you wanna make sure that it is no more than 25% of your net pay that you take home on a monthly basis. When it comes to your mortgage, there are a few things you wanna take into consideration because your mortgage is calculated by the following, the total amount of your mortgage, the interest rate on your mortgage, and the amortization of your mortgage. So let's say, for example, you took out a $500,000 mortgage with a 3% interest rate spread out over the course of 30 years. That would cost you on a monthly basis $2,103 or a total of $25,236 per year. When it comes to mortgage insurance, this adds a significant amount on an annual basis to your overall cost. So when you look at this, say if you had that same $500,000 mortgage, if you did not have the ability to put 20% down, what you would then have to do is take out mortgage insurance. That would be about 1.75% at closing. So when you actually are just buying the home right out of the gate, you have to pay a premium of almost $8,700 right there on that $500,000 mortgage. And then you'd have to pay additionally every single month anywhere between 0.4 5% and 1.05% on a monthly basis just to maintain mortgage. And that could total up to almost $5,000 a year. So this begins to add up significantly when you have to make those types of payments. When it comes to property taxes, it depends upon what region you live in, but it's safe to estimate that on average, you are gonna spend about 1% of your overall cost of your home to your overall payment when it comes to taxes. So if you had a $500,000 home, then you would expect to pay about $5,000 on an annual basis in property taxes. Now it would probably be even safer than to round it up to $10,000 because then you could include your renovations and any other upgrades that need to be done to your home during the course of that year as well. So once again, that's a lot of money you're having to set aside just into this investment of your home. On the note of home renovations, a recent report was done and it found that Americans spend over $7,000 a year just maintaining their home and doing little upgrades here and there. So if you consider doing that every single year, that is pretty significant. And generally speaking, this is just for your primary residence where you are living. So that investment is really not doing too much to increase the overall value of your home. It's increasing your overall experience in the home, but it's not something that is yielding an annual return. It's actually taking away money from yourself that you could invest elsewhere. As I previously said, then you'll have homeowners association fees or condo fees depending upon where you live. And those can be very significant. In the United States, they will range anywhere from $2,500 all the way up to $7,000 during the course of a year. And that is pretty substantial. So this is just to like do the maintenance of your overall neighborhood. Perhaps you have a security, you might have a, a fitness center or a pool or something else like that that's associated with it. But once again, that is a lot of money that you're attributing just to be able to live in the ho homeowner area that you Live in. Utility bills, including water, heat, electricity, and others, can really add up over time. The average American spends over $2,000 on utility bills every single day. So, from that standpoint, what I want to recommend that you do is that you flick the like switch for the YouTube algorithm down below and help push this video to other people who might need to hear it. And in doing so, maybe save a little bit of electricity for yourself. Now, I'm just kidding around, but if you wouldn't mind actually liking the video, that would mean a lot to myself. But if you do try and cut back on your electricity, that could be good for our environment and it can also do other things for you, but if you flip the like switch on on this video, it's not going to cost you a dime. Another reason why you don't want your home to be the largest asset that you own is that it lacks diversification in your overall investment portfolio. When you think of it like this, if you're investing into an asset class such as your home, putting $500,000 into it, and then you're tying that to a very small geographical area such as your neighborhood, you're really putting all of your eggs in one basket, and that does not provide you with the diversification necessary in order for you to have a little bit of a safer approach to your overall investment. Because as we've seen in other areas of the society, people might lose their home 
home to a tornado or to a flood, obviously you need the insurance to go with that, but obviously you're gonna find that if the overall neighborhood starts to depreciate, if an economic sector goes away, if you have anything that goes in a wrong in that particular rate region or that particular neighborhood, it can really affect your overall net worth, specifically if a home is your largest asset. So you wanna do your best to actually improve your diversification, not have everything tied up into what your home is worth. And this isn't hyperbole from myself. According to the Federal Reserve, this is precisely what happened back in 2008, where you had African-American and Hispanic households that had too much of their net worth tied into the assets such as their home. For African-Americans, it was 50%, and for Hispanic, it was 30%. And when that housing market crashed, it really then did a damage on creating an even more of socioeconomic uh, disparity between different individuals, different groups, and that is unfortunate. So if you have all of your money tied into your largest asset as your home, you're really putting yourself subject to the whims of the economy and you're not providing with the ability to have a more diverse approach to actually building wealth that's actually liquid and something that can weather the storms when we have financial crises that come up. Another reason why you do not want your home to be your largest financial asset is that owning a home can be a financial trap. For example, having home equity is a positive thing, but it doesn't really help you move forward in achieving financial freedom. That's because it's not liquid and you cannot access it. As a matter of fact, people sometimes do what's called an HELOC, which is a HELOC or a home equity loan, and that is really bad because then what you're doing is that you're leveraging your home and you're trying to take money out to either make repairs or do other expenses, and I don't think that is a wise approach. So if you actually have equity in your home, it is great for your overall net worth, but you cannot touch that unless you sell your home and actually take it out. So let's say that you have a house that is worth $500,000 with a $100,000 mortgage. So your overall equity in that home would be $400,000, but you cannot access that money easily. There are only two different ways that you can do so. One would be to sell your home, and the other would be to take out another mortgage, which really is not a good idea. So if you were to sell your home, that's cool. You could have access to that $400,000, but then where are you going to live? So you really have to think that through if it makes financial sense for you. And overall, if you haven't invested that money over the time, it's not benefiting from compound interest like it would have if you had had that money in the market. So if your ultimate goal is to actually have financial freedom, purchasing a home might not necessarily put you on that track. And the data actually backs this up. When you look at the Federal Reserve, they found that the average home worth in the United States of America right now is $185,000. So people have homes that are worth that much. However, the overall financial assets that people have access to that is liquid is only 23,500. So when you think about trying to actually build wealth overall that can help pay you on the long term and actually help you achieve financial freedom, a house doesn't necessarily provide that to you. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad thing to own a home because it can provide you with a safe, overall stable place to be, but if your goal is financial freedom, it might not necessarily provide you with that. All right, so let's say that you do wanna focus on financial freedom and doing so outside of owning a home. I wanna share a few different ways you can do that, but the most important thing to understand is having accessible net worth, not just focusing on your total net worth. And what I mean by this is you wanna have access to liquid amounts of money, not just what you have tied up into a mortgage or what you have as overall debt. So here are a few ways that you can actually increase your accessible net worth. One would be to pay down your debt, and the other would be to diversify your wealth into other asset classes, such as stocks, bonds, and other investments. And the most important thing that you can do to actually solve this problem, get past the absurdity of owning a home, is flicking the like switch for the YouTube algorithm. I'm just getting around, but actually I just wanna say thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video today. If you wouldn't mind, please flick the like switch for the YouTube algorithm. It would help push this video to other people who might need to hear it. Furthermore, if you wouldn't mind, please comment down below. I'd love to interact with you, get to know you, do any research on your behalf, and help you make well-informed decisions moving forward. Also, if you have any disagreements or you have other insights you wanna share, please do share those with me. I'd love to hear from you. Furthermore, if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot to myself personally, as I do everything I can to create positive content that encourages you and myself to lead lives of meaning and purpose, all while maintaining balance and moderation. And if you do subscribe to the channel, please tap the notification bell. That will notify you every time I post a video, which I do on a weekly basis. Once again, I'd like to thank you for watching the video today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Talk to you next time.